Okay, now let's publish it out. Oh, look at that. We have a nice glowing moon. All right, um, so one little thing you can do to kind of help yourself out with um, figuring out what those properties are going to be for your your filters is to um, just actually apply a filter to it. And this is kind of getting cut off, but if I, if I click down on, well, here we go. If I press down right here, then you can see it. It's a glow. And then you're, uh, I don't know why it disappeared. That's kind of odd. Huh. Well, <laughs> let's just, it's not going to help me out to debug this right now, but um, there's that blur X property. Okay. And you know, setting that thing up. Um, your strength, that's something we left off of the, um, the, the code, but you, that's something you can set to your quality, um, your color. Okay. Obviously over here, you're not choosing a hex value. You're describing a swatch in this case. And um, so let's say you, like you had drop shadow, you know, you can look and um, angle is another thing you can set distance and so on like that. Um, so those just give you nice little hints. And of course, when you're going and um, writing your code again, why, I don't know why I didn't get my moon back. What's going on here? What did I do? Oh, I see what it was. I set the display to, to blending. Sometimes that happens if you if you happen to be um, using your scroll wheel over top um, that uh, that setting. But it's a nice way of uh, also kind of looking at all your options. Like that hard light one looks kind of cool. Let's see what, let's see what that does. Hmm. Yeah, that's neat. Wait. Oh, I'm just messing around now. Come on, let me do it. Yeah, look at that. Cool. Uh, okay, so let's jump back down over to our uh, actions for this. So again, if we were to write glow and then dot, uh, and then you'd get your, your code hinting up here, you can see where's like strength. Okay, and then equals, I believe that's set by numbers like so. Like 1.5 would be 150%. I think um, so anyway uh, you definitely have lots of different options for uh, your filters let's see we could go over here to probably find them in flash help right just kind of want to show you guys where to find all that stuff again I'm having troubles bringing up the help documents and I don't know if that's because do I already have them open I don't know well let me cut over here to um, Flash CS4. And... Find them like that. Now that put me in a general area too. Filters. Yeah, it's kind of useless. It's it threw me into kind of like searching all of uh, Adobe's uh, documents. Well, here we go, flash filters. There. Um, okay, so there was that glow filter that we were just working with. Um, some of the more common ones would be well, your drop shadow, uh, your blur filter, and then of course uh, once you start exploring these things, uh, click on them and. Um, Again, you'll, you'll kind of come back to hopefully some things that look familiar, like that property that we were just dealing with with the glow one. Uh, that also applies to the blur filter as well. And keep scroll scrolling down, and you get tons of um, other options. I guess it's kind of the stranger ones, like like quality, right, for example, right here. Um, I believe you have to set that to, let's see, bitmap filter quality. Let me go over and try it. Yeah, just making sure that didn't give me an error. So um, again, those, those help documents are invaluable. I'm not, you know, this isn't a book, this is a video. There's absolutely no way I can teach you guys every single little line of code that has to do with every single filter in there. But it is important that you guys um, also are able to kind of navigate those help documents and not get overwhelmed 
uh, by the enormity of the information that is inside of there. Uh, you know, when I look through things uh, in the help documents, I'm constantly skimming it. I'm, I'm rarely like reading from uh, the top of the page to the bottom. I look for kind of key things uh, like I was just showing you guys a second ago with that window that, there we go, move that out of the way. So I'll kind of go and I'll, I'll skim, you know, I'll look at the top here, public properties, these methods, um, things that have kind of looked familiar to me in the past. Um, and I don't even, you know, like a lot of times I don't even kind of think, oh, this is a method, this is a property. Um, the, kind of the more you do stuff, the more you just basically pick up on the same things that you've done before, basically. Um, and, um, you know, I've, I've said this in many other tutorials, but um, learning programming is often about just remembering not the code itself, but the last place that you wrote that code. So I have tons of documents, uh, ones like this one, tweeting and staging, where I, um, it's not that I remember exactly this, you know, the, the, the order of the, the, the things on the keyboard that I have to type. It's so I go, well, I remember I typed that once before, so I'm just going to go open up that document and paste or, or go through it and, and, and cut and paste uh, the chunks of uh, what I've previously done. Okay, so, and maybe that's how... <laughs> society will forget all of its technology that it created once everybody you know <laughs> there's ever an arm again and, we, and everything gets destroyed you know including all the books and everything like that people are just gonna go yeah i forgot or I, I lost where i put all that stuff so we're, we're back to using uh sticks and uh <laughs> stone wheels but uh i'm gonna close down uh, this uh part of the, the the basic lesson and i'll be back for our third part where we deal with uh more like buttons and clicking on things and stuff like that.